Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, John. Hello, hello. So, this week, we um, are going to continue uh, on our new path and try to do all of our shows in conjunction with what we are releasing on the new site, the A New Year, A New You. So, this week, we are talking... Um, about the resetting of the macros or tightening them down, um, really visiting. So the first two weeks we released the um, a, new, a New You, A New Year, A New You. And on those two weeks, we were just really um, going through that you were coming off of a standard American diet and you were reducing your carbohydrates. And then by week three, we were really focusing in on dialing in the proteins and the fats. So those have been released uh, out on the website. So this show, John has actually decided to take uh, to take the plunge for everybody and dial his macros in so that we have, we're going to analyze what he's done and yeah, talk about that. It's not so much about dialing in and just a, a little background, uh, maybe a refresher if you've kind of been involved already. You'll, you'll kind of know that I come from a place where uh, I am not trying to lose weight. I'm an active person. So when we go through me as an example, we're going to talk about different goals, different options, uh, different, uh, you know, different calculators you can use to kind of get some ballparks. And then the other thing that's important is that I hate tracking. I absolutely hate tracking. As a matter of fact, I attempted to do a baseline tracking last week and got so frustrated I kind of gave up. <laughs> but that said, uh, I am not going to let perfection stop me from moving forward. But let's actually address that. Right, because you're not the only one. I as well hate tracking, and I recommend it to everybody, and that's kind of hypocritical. <laughs> but At least you're honest. here's the reason why: when we, most people, especially our age, do not really have the mind's eye of what a serving size is or what a portion is. So the the reason that we really recommend that you uh, track your food is because you need to actually have that visual on what a quarter pound cheeseburger really equates to the protein and the fat um, and that sort of thing. So I'm not saying that you have to track for the rest of your life because Lord knows I would never do that. It is I do it for a couple of days and then I. I just can't handle it anymore either. But I really think it's very beneficial when you're coming off of, a st especially the standard American diet, that you do it for a minimum of two weeks, but I really like people to do it for a month because it, it really does reset that whole, um, that whole visual that you have. So again, don't think that we're telling people that they need to do something and then we're not doing it just because we want to torture you. But there, re there really is a method behind the madness. Right. If you want me to torture you, you can come to my, <laughs> my classes at the Gold's Gym. Uh, but uh, that said, that, that is one of the most fantastic jobs because you can torture people and they're actually okay with it. Uh, side, side note, they pay, you to, they pay you to torture people. So anyway, uh, way, way, way side, uh, side, side track there. But um, so to follow up on that and, and take you just a little bit back down my path, there was a time when I first probably started going and, and looking at changing my, you know, the way I was eating. I did track pretty religiously for a couple of weeks to kind of figure out where I was at, and I found out a couple of things I gleaned from that. I was not getting enough calories. I wasn't getting enough protein at the time, and um, I really needed to make some tweaks. So I learned from that, right? So now let's uh, t you know fast forward to where we are now. I haven't tracked anything for quite a while. So yeah, yeah. So when Go you ahead. were doing that tracking and you found that you weren't eating enough of certain things, like you said, mm -hmm. were there things that you were going over on that you were like, well, I didn't realize I was going over on these ones, and you had to dial them back? So that's a great question. So the question for the guys on the phone is, was there some some things I did find out I was having too much of. And honestly, 
No, but I would imagine that if I did it now, I would find out yes. Okay. And we're going to kind of talk through that a little bit. And it really comes down to um, we're going to walk through some steps that you can do. And because I, I'm realistic, I know I'm not going to still track, mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about maybe some proactive things we can do to kind of address what you're talking about. And I'll, and I'll tell you where I have hypothesis, uh, hypothesis size, uh, is it, well, I don't know what the plural that is, but I have some things that I'm pretty sure are, are affecting me right now. So to paint a picture of where I'm at now, I do still want to do what I would call my goal it would still be a little bit of a lean gain. I do not want to gain any weight, but I do want lean muscle mass a little bit more. So that's me. Um, I have stalled at about, and I, I can include these, um, I didn't get a chance to do my bod pod, so with the whole, uh, that was my idea, I did not get to that, so I'm going to have to use my last in body. So my body percent, uh, my percentage of body fat is in the neighborhood of 14 to 15, and I don't know why I wrote 10, but maybe 10 to 12, so I'm really, really looking at just a small amount, but to be fair, I, I have, I have been the same weight within plus two, two minus pounds for the last two years. So however I'm eating has, is having no bearing on my weight whatsoever. So if you want to call that my set point, if you believe in that, um, whatever. Uh, so if I'm going to do a little more lean gaining, I know I need to change something. So what, what are your, what's your hypothesis on that? What are you going to change? Um, well, you know what, let's walk through that. So the first thing in order to do this is I had to kind of look at a few things. So before I knew, I had a caloric um, deficit. So I feel like I may be in that position now. Um, because I do a, some light intermittent fasting, I skip breakfast, you know, quite often. I'm thinking, you know, I may, I may not be getting enough calories. So that's, that's the one first thing I want to take into consideration or I want to look at. Um, and the next one is... I have been saying this for a long time and haven't been acting on it. I feel like I need to bump to, to, to address that, and these kind of go hand in hand. I think I need to bump up my fat a little bit. We are, we've been talked, we've talked, I don't know how many times about trying to, to add some fat. And uh, I, again, I, I, I really feel like I'm at a point where if I'm going to try to get my calories up, I need to start at least doing some, some measuring. So, um, I think the risk of not tracking is you could be wildly different. Uh, you know, you could go out to eat, go to Chili's and say, oh, yeah, man, uh, you know, I'm going to have a half a rack of baby rack ribs, but don't put the barbecue sauce on there. And then, and then find out later that, well, maybe they still soaked them in sugar water or something because yeah. they, they <laughs> yeah. taste too good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my, that was my yesterday lunch, by the way. <laughs> I was like, these cannot be this good. So anyway, um, those, those small things. So what would you say, um, Jolene, your, uh, the things that would kind of you've, – you've learned of that are gotchas also? Because I'm thinking like serving size. Can you talk about that? Because you've talked a little bit about that way versus – weighing versus serving size, and I think that's something that I am going to attempt to do this time, so can yeah. you kind of elaborate on why you say that that's more appropriate? Yeah, so um, a more accurate way to understand the food is to actually weigh it, um, because if you try to do a cup, depending on which one you use, if you're using liquid, you want to use a different measuring cup than you do for a dry, um, one, you might have a little bit more. Wait, 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 pause right there. There's, are, are there actually two different measuring cups? <laughs> um, yes, John, there are actually is. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that? Everybody else did. Of course oh they did not know this. But. Seriously, so like, so there, there's yeah. differences of those measuring cups I have? There's different ones? Well, the, and there, yeah, because it's easier to measure in a liquid measuring cup for liquid versus a dry measuring cup because you can skim the top off. Uh, I've, so, I've, I've not, 
All right, going on record. Yeah. I did not know there was different types. A cup is a cup, right? Well, a cup is a cup. <laughs> if you measure exactly the back exact, every single time, which I guarantee you you're not. So if you know that, I don't know, I think it's 28 grams is a cup. or so, I don't know. I'm going to be off on that. But if you know what the grams equates to a cup, you can put it on the scale and get that exact every single time. So that's what I do when I, when I bake or anything like that. I actually weigh the food. Um, to put it in there. And again, it's because if I'm going to do something, I do it all the way. I can't really do a gray area on black or white. So you could still use your measuring cups and your measuring spoon <laughs> and get a ballpark. Um, but weighing the food is the most accurate. You're, I mean, you're going to know the exact amount if you weigh it. So I did a test on myself. Uh, I do heavy cream in my coffee. So I, I got a scale from Amazon, like $10. So low barrier of entry. Um, <clears throat> put my coffee cup on it, zeroed it out. And I don't measure when I put heavy cream in. I just pour some. <laughs> and do you, may, do you think you put in way less than you really did? I have absolutely no idea because I have no, no, <laughs> no starting point. <laughs> but what I can tell you is that that I did it once, and I measured it, and I wrote it down. And then the next day, I did it again, way different. <laughs> I mean, the pores between the two, yes. between the two different. So let's just pretend that I thought I was doing a, like you know, a tablespoon. I'm not measuring it right, but it was drastically different. See, and like that, almost double. And that is a perfect point <laughs> of what your mind's eye is, because you think that that's what it equates to, which it probably doesn't. You probably are pouring way more than what you thought to begin with. I think, yeah. But you also are varying it. So, oh, way, I mean, way more variable. Before, and, and if I don't have to go back and, you know, tell people what a recipe is, if I'm just doing it at home, that's exactly what I do. When I pour things, I count to the seconds, right? If you, you can <laughs> kind of get a ballpark if you do one, two, and yeah. that's two tablespoons. Um, but that goes, I mean, that actually plays into the perfect point. I know. We don't know what those measurements really are. So, we think we do, and I, me included, right? I mean, I, I think that I am really good at it. I've done this for two years, and, and, I, still, and I still catch myself like, oh, wow, that's way more than I thought it was. So, well, I, I felt like I needed to air out the fact that <laughs> you are right once again. <laughs> And uh, I did learn a little bit of that. So I think those wild swings are one of those things I'm going to take into consideration. I must say, if you've never used the scale, just really fast. Super simple. Cup, re-zero, pour in whatever you want. And if you have two ingredients, re-zero, pour in the next ingredient. Obviously, if you pour too much, you can't take any out because you just combine the two ingredients. But if you don't want to use those... You can start adjusting it. You can start adjusting it. Yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> So anyway, that kind of gives you a little ballpark of what I'm trying to kind of consider. So once now I kind of know that I've got a problem, what's the next step? Doing something about it. So I didn't have the bod pod, but I kind of knew my resting metabolic rate because honestly things haven't changed that much. So I went out to Google and I looked for a calculator. The one I settled on is uh, Keto Savage. So it doesn't, you know, there's plenty of calculators out there. Uh, Dr. Nally's, is that the one that we've kind of talked about before? It is. Um, so with Dr. Nally, his, these calculators, I'm not a huge fan of most of the calculators. First of all, they're, they ask a lot of information that most people don't know. Most people don't know what your body fat is or any of that. So then they send you somewhere else to find that out. If you want to use them, I mean, we can put a couple of them in the show notes, but um, they also give you, you know, moderate, extreme. I mean, there's a lot of things to, that you can choose from. And most of the time, too many options are way too overwhelming for people. So I actually, Dr. Nally has, and I can put the website uh, in the show notes as well, but Dr. Nally has a quick and easy um, calculator for his. So for men, for the first five feet of height, you're going to do 50 grams of protein and then 2.3 grams of protein for each inch above that. So, for example, a six-foot man 
is going to do 50 grams um, of protein for the first five feet, and then you're going to add 27.6 for the 12 inches above the 12 feet. So in total, you would do 76.6 grams of protein. And that's for a day. For for the whole day. Yep. So and. See, that was already way too much math for me. Yeah. So for a woman. <laughs> um, so have you done? Do, is this what you used? It it is what I used. Okay. Yeah. So for a woman, it's 45.5 for the first five foot and 2.3 for each inch, which clearly we have less math because most of us are shorter than six feet. So for a five foot four inch woman, um, that would equate to 54.7 grams of protein. Now that is for somebody who is um, not extremely active, um, probably a desk job, maybe a light exercise, um, but they do actually then tell you that if you are somebody who does heavy exercise, that for a man, you need to take that total grams and multiply it by 1.6, and for a female, you multiply it by 1.4. And so those are the, the protein grams that you would do for the day. So, for instance, for John, because he, we're going to pretend like he's six foot, I have no idea how tall he is. I'm five nine. I'm horrible with height, so... Um, all right, well, we're just going with six foot today. We're going to add a couple on you. Uh, um, I feel so much bigger now. But he he does exercise fairly heavily. So for a six foot man, it would be 124.5 grams for somebody who does heavy exercise. So what we would recommend is that, especially in the beginning, when you first start switching over and you're hungry, and you will be, um, you actually are going to want to – to take that total and divide it on how many meals that you're doing. So if you're eating three meals, take that into three. If you're doing four, so as you start getting in this, you are going to eat less meals. So I think, John, you said you eat two meals a day. So he's going to take that and divide it into two. Yeah. Um, and that's but, just because that's what works for me. Right. Um, you know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. you got to find out what your sweet spot is. And, you know, obviously, if you don't skip breakfast, you're going to, you know, you're going to want to do that. And if you like to snack, then you may want to put those in there, too. It's, yeah. it's kind of where you're at. Well, keep <clears throat> um, Is it on raw or cooked? Okay. So, yeah, there's a little bit of controversy about that. To be honest, most of the time I do mine uh, cooked, but... If you read uh, documentation, they do tell you to, to weigh the raw. Okay. Uh, first of all, I don't really care to touch raw food that much, so <laughs> handling it that much to try to weigh it is, <laughs> I just, and it's not that much different. Okay. I mean, again, it's a ballpark. Yeah. This is not an exact science, so okay. um, if you're used to weighing something that's raw, if that's how you do it, then that's fine, but... I just do it. I just do it cooked. But okay. yeah, okay. yeah. So I know that we've also told people kind of a quick and dirty way to um, calculate your macros would be your ideal weight. And again, that is a loaded word because people's idea <laughs> of what their ideal weight would be. So first of all, be realistic. You know. I'm five foot three, but I'm pretty big boned. I'm never going to weigh 99 pounds, Ooh, no matter what. Hold on, I got to Google. How much does LL yeah. Cool J weigh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so realistically, you know that you need to weigh somewhere around 125 pounds. You take half. I mean, that's how many um, fat grams you probably want to start with, and then half of that would be your protein. It's a quick and dirty way to do it, um, but again, it gives you in a ballpark. And because this is so individualized, you're going to keep experimenting with yourself and make sure that your protein and your, your fats are dialed in anyway. So, so, you, so say that again. It's the weight, your ideal weight is the fat, and then half of that is the protein. Correct. Okay. Yep. So the reason I went with the Keto Savage calculator is because you just type in some things and it spits it all out. <laughs> and uh, just... Just it's way. It also has way more um, information because he is a uh, works with bodybuilders, so it's got um, all of the buzzwords. If you're on a lean gain versus a you know 
and average people like me don't really know what those things mean. So well, anyway, <laughs> it gives you options based on where, on you know where you're at, when not. <clears throat> okay. So you kind of got your your goals. Use Google, figure out you know what you're gonna your goal macro is gonna be, yep. and then you start to figure out your split, your meal split, what, what kind of uh, understanding. And the reason why I think it's important for the meal split is this is where one of my, I think, uh, validation points needs to be. So let's say, because um, I, I don't think I really did the math to get uh, very well um, versed, uh, I've decided that I am going to use the, the calculator. I'm going to do you know, my exercise level. I didn't say I was active. I said I was moderately active because for the most part I sit at, you know, stand at my desk. Um, just because I work out a few times at the gym doesn't mean I'm a, you know, an athlete. Um, I want to start looking at my meals. So what I'm going to do is take my, the carbs, because I actually care about carbs. So let me paint you a little bit of picture of some other things that happened today. Um, For example, this is how I mass prep my vegetables, and we've kind of talked about this before, right? I open the bag of the pre-shredded, pre-mixed salad. Uh, I think it's called, you know, something I don't know, I mentioned before, kale, kale power salad or whatever. I throw the dressing away, and then I dump that into the till the pan is covered on the bottom. So there's my first variability, depending on which pan I use. And then I pour in exactly that much oil, uh, uh, avocado oil. You know, I never measure it ever. And then I put in exactly a spoonish full of oil. <laughs> I mean, of butter based on, you know, carry gold and that packaging is hard to measure or anything, right? And then I divide it into, you know, whatever I eat. And then whatever's left, I just put it in my containers. So there you go. You can already start to see. So what I plan on doing uh, moving forward is actually measuring. And then um, I am going to put in my fitness pal, because I've gone back to my fitness pal, as a default meal. So you can set up basically recipes. So here is a a situation where I can say I'm always going to put in this weight of the vegetable mix, and I'm going to put in this much butter, this much oil, and then I've got the breakdown for what that is. And then it will calculate it so when I measure what's in my lunch, I actually know what I'm getting. I'll know how much fat is in there and how much vegetables. And then to the point that you made earlier, I will start to visualize better, you know, as a, a, we'll call it a, you know, reset to see what that is. Um, The next piece then would be layering on the protein. So then I'll be able to pre-weigh whatever protein, and I rotate proteins, we've talked about that, but let's say, for example, you're following our default two-week uh, you know, cookbook kind of thing, the chicken out of the crock pot. I'll actually be able to measure that and then start to get a feel for how much a, a ideal serving size, and I'm using quotes, of that chicken would be. Um, and then, if I decide I'm so much inclined, I can't decide if I'm going to do this or not, but I've also toyed with the possibility of then sometimes I freeze meat, especially if if I'm doing like smoking a turkey, pre-freezing it in those serving sizes, which I think may be like a bodybuilding like hack, but uh, do you do do that? that. Oh man, talk talk about it then because is this going to be another thing like you probably told me before and I don't do? No, it's... I mean, a lot of times I will make meals, and then that's just what we eat throughout the whole week. But um, I have been trying to get away from doing that because of the whole conversation we had with Tracy on one of our interviews and how to try to get you rotating. Yeah, so to rotate food. So I have been trying to um, to go ahead and uh, freeze some of that stuff instead of eating it all week. So I do two different ways. One way I do, I will weigh. I'll put everything in one bowl, and so I know how much my husband eats and I know how much I eat, so I'll just combine that, and that'll be a dinner for the both of us so I don't divide it for individually. Um, and then when I 
you know, unfreeze it and go to, to cook it. I just divide it out the way that we would eat it. Or um, then I would go, um, sometimes I would do the, like if, if I know I'm going to do it for lunches, then I will do it for individual. I'll just do the different. I do a lot of now, I've just started doing the, the food vacuuming uh, to keep it for, uh, you know, from getting freezer burnt or whatever, and so I don't have to deal with it as fast. I just try to use it fast because I'm... Well, I was, but then I started getting so much that it was like, oh my gosh, we have to hurry up and eat this because now it's coming, you know, I just, I don't want to mess with all that, so I started vacuum it and now I can just eat it when I want to and I don't have to have that one more worry of, oh my gosh, go hurry up and check the freezer and what do we have to eat this week because yeah. it needs to come out. So, just one of those. You just like gadgets. I know, I know, I'm terrible. I have a problem. Sealer. I do, I have a problem. Um, now, one thing that I do want to point out, so that is an awesome idea and I do that as well. So, I cook things to my macros um, but I will say that that is a, maybe an advanced thing. So if that seems overwhelming to you, you can still do the proactive thing. If you are just coming into this, cook your food and then eat to your macros, and that's fine. But if you are in a place like John and I are in, and we're going to talk about mine in a, in a few minutes, but if you're in a place where we are, we, we're very familiar with all of this, now we want to try to make some changes and really tweak our own um, eating habits and, and do some individualized uh, analysis. Those are the things, and, and you don't have to wait till then, but you want to be more familiar so that this stuff you're eating, right? This should not be so overwhelming that you're so stressed out about it. This is food. It's not science. You don't need to do all this math. Uh, so, again, we're telling you some of the ways to be proactive with it, but understand that it may be too overwhelming for you in the beginning and that that will come later. So don't think that you have to change your whole habit and, and go to this right, right at the moment. Yeah, and, and on that, from an action point, and they're stealing a little bit from what we were going to talk about a little bit later, but pick a meal. We've talked about this I don't know how many times. Pick a meal, pick two meals, start to get comfortable with those, work them in, and then slowly add till you kind of know that. But um, before we get too far off, I, I do want to circle back and kind of ask a little bit of a clarification standpoint. So you said you you uh, make the meals with your macros um, in in, uh, in mind. Right. <clears throat> so that that may be confusing for somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. So. For you, you make a you like the casseroles and those kind of one dish things. Where I tend to be a little bit more, I still I'm still like the guy that has little sides and stuff because I ne honestly never know what my kids are going to eat. But <clears throat> walk through just one example of how you would tweak something to fit your macros. Okay, so last week um, my husband as well decided that he was going to start dialing some things in. So for his breakfast. I made his breakfast uh, casserole to his macros. So we knew what he needed to eat as far as proteins and all of that. So um, I cut up six ounces of ham and used in in the casserole. We did exactly six ounces of cheese. Uh, we did 12 eggs. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to give us the exact. Yeah, but but you know what I mean. So like we 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 weighed each of the ingredients. I knew how many servings it was going to come out. And again, that's the servings are a little because you're cutting it right. So one might be a little bit bigger than the other, but as it averages out for the whole pan, it was going to be 12 servings. So I knew or six servings, whatever it was. I knew exactly how many he was going to get on average every day. So that's how we started cooking to try to help him because he's not going to track. So the first well, time the first time you did your breakfast casserole, you took those ingredients, you put them in a tool. Exactly. Did you and you you still use the tool? I use the chronometer. So for some reason just so everybody knows we've gone back and forth about this, but for some reason I can't get the chronometer to work on my phone without and so many annoying ads that I get frustrated, and, and so I went back to my fitness pal. So I have a I have a little bit more variability 
and we've talked about that before, but for some reason you don't have ads. I don't. <laughs> so, I don't. So, so what is the difference of how you made the casserole last week versus how you would have made it in the past? Like cooking to the macro versus just cooking it? Yeah, so um, we before I probably wouldn't have weighed every single ingredient, right? I would have just been like, oh, there's two slices of ham and chopped it in, and I, you know, I, it would have been much looser. Um, and then as far as his macros, he would have just eaten, and then we would have said, oh, okay, so this is about what you had. And so before dinner, this is where you're at, and you can only have so much. Yeah. Where today, he is actually, we've measured those foods out long before he's eaten them, and we know for breakfast, this is how many of your macros, this is for lunch, and this is for dinner. And you could have a snack in there if you needed it, but at the end of the day, with what we have have decided to eat, gotcha. we already know the macros up front. Gotcha. So it's just kind of a proactive way to approach it versus just being reactive. So <clears throat> I know we've gone into some, some pretty serious detail here, so I just want to take one step back and just say this conversation – would have turned me completely off before. I do not like to track stuff. I don't want to do any of that stuff. But I do feel like I'm at a point where I, I need a, I'm going to call it a reset, where I just want to try to double check a few things, see where I'm at, to try to reset my baseline, which is why I would argue that some of the proactive things that you're talking about would, would be way easier to handle than me sitting at a, you know, Qdoba or whatever, saying, well, yes, uh, I would like guac with that, and I'll take the biggest scoop you can stick on there. <laughs> and then I, I bring in guacamole, and it's, you know, really twice the guacamole than a serving size because... Yeah. And it is, but that also goes back to figuring out who you are and what kind of person you are. I know. I know. Right? Yeah. So there's so many variables in it, um, but... Sometimes when people are coming off of the, the standard American diet and they're not fully understanding what proteins are and what carbs are and what fats, I mean, most people know what fats are because we've avoided them our whole life. But if, if you're coming off of a standard American diet and you may not fully understand all of that, it is extremely overwhelming to not only change what you're eating, to change your thought process, to do all of this. So Trying to be proactive at the beginning might be more than some people can handle, and that's fine. We're not asking you to do that, but we're giving you ideas of some of the things that you might want to try to start moving into, uh, because once you have got to a point where John and I are, and again, you know, we're trying to actually make specific changes and not just broadly, I want to feel better, I want to lose weight, I want, I mean, he said, I want to, you know, very specific goal. I want to have gain lean muscle mass, so this is what I'm doing to try to achieve that. Uh, very similarly, I did have a bod pod, so John and I had talked about this. I went on the 15th of January and had a bod pod done, and I was not happy with my results. So although I don't really care what my scale says, um, I've talked about this numerous times, I've bounced back and forth between, I don't know, I think it was 153 and 156 for since last November, to be quite honest. And, I, and I'm okay with that, really. But what I wasn't okay with is when they give you this readout, then they tell you how much of, how much of your scale weight is your bones and muscle and how much is fat. And the fat part was what I was not really <laughs> pleased about. So I started really doing, and, and quite honestly, why I had the bod pot is because I'd been thinking about it, and John and I had talked about this. I really thought that I was eating way too low of calories, but because I don't track, it was just a theory. Mm -hmm. So I had the bod pod done, decided I was going to start tracking. So Tuesday, I started tracking, and I knew, because the bod pod gives you the reading, what your bare minimum, I forget what it is, BMR, is that, is that what the acronym is? for the minimum amount of calories you should eat for... No, it's resting metabolic rate, so okay. it's R, M. Okay, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever your minimum calories are. And then it tells you... body mass index. Um, well, that's a BMI, but... Um, what, and then it tells you, you know, at sedentary, you should eat this many calories. So I knew going in on Tuesday that <clears throat> I had the idea of what calories I was going to eat, and I... 
was miserable. <laughs> I ate to those calories, and I am not even kidding you. I told my husband. To expand on that, because they're yeah. going to think you're miserable because you. Yeah, I, well, I was miserable because I ate way more than right. what I had been eating. So my theory was correct. I, I mean, I'm not kidding you. Tuesday and Wednesday, I kept texting my husband, I swear I think I'm going to explode if I stick one more thing in my mouth, but I need to eat X amount more calories. Okay, what was that the sound of? Half of the people dialing out because they're mad. <laughs> You're like, oh, but again, no, again, because we we don't know what that is, right? I thought that I was doing what I should be because I've done this for two years. Yeah. But I was eating way less calories than what I thought I was and what I needed to be. So after two days of walking around so miserable, then I figured out I have to keep the protein where it needs to be. I have to keep the um, carbs where they need to be. So I really had to start adding a bunch of fat. So I used to skip breakfast. And this is extremely hard for me. I don't like breakfast. I don't like eating when I first get up. But in order for me to be able to get all of those calories in, I cannot skip breakfast. So you need to eat more calories to reduce the amount of fat in your body. Yes, and I know it sounds crazy. But believe me, it absolutely works. So when I left my house Monday morning in TMI, but I always weigh no clothes, whatever. First thing in the morning, I get up. So before I left my house on Monday, I weighed. I knew what my home scale said before I had the Bod Pod. I was at 153.5. So had the Bod Pod, changed my eating on Tuesday. By Thursday morning when I weighed, I was down to 151.1. So it really does work, which is absurd and crazy. But your body is not stupid. Yeah. If you are starving it, which too few of calories does starve yeah. you, your body will go in defense mode and it will do store. yeah, it'll do whatever it has to to survive. So if you are not giving it what it needs, it's going to fight against you. Yeah, if you want to re- read more about that, just Google set point. Um, so, uh, it's kind of commonly referred to as your body's set point. Um, and that's a mix of your metabolism and everything. But, yeah. Um, so I know we're running a little bit short on time. We kind of actually went over a little bit, which is totally fine. So if they want to – so just to kind of – don't we try to wrap that? You looked at – she looked at the clock and was like – okay. So, uh, so I, I do want to kind of follow up on some action steps because we kind of went all over the place. So just to kind of recap um, uh, some light steps, find out what your macronutrient – mix is going to be. Use Google. If you're not keto, you know, Google whatever diet you're following to, to happen to be following today and try to find out what your macronutrient rate, rate is. But I would argue you need to stick with something for a long term. Don't go through from fad to fad. But we've talked about that before with yo-yo dieting. Um, and I'm going to actually pitch the MyGov website and the MyPlate if you've never looked at that since they've redone the pyramid, you know, I mean, it does talk about your you know, plate size and stuff. It's got a lot of decent value that is kind of around this topics. So, you know, you know, take that with what, you know, what, what it's worth. Uh, you know, it, it will still tell you to make sure you have milk. But, um, you know, so, so that's, a, you know, you, you know where your macronutrient ratio, your ratios are, but it kind of gives a good, good kind of follow up on, you know, thinking about what your plate's going to look like. And since we never give them any credit, I would say that that, that is way better than it was when I was in school um, doing the food pyramid. And then the kind of last thing is to proactively come up with some of your default meals, your go-to meals. You know, not don't track them bef- after the fact. Track them before and kind of start to proactively think about how you you could change your eating style based on maybe some some new goals or what you would like to do to do and then stick with that for a while and see where it goes you know tr- try to really you know don't just do it one day and then like oh that didn't work uh, you know really give it a little bit of time i was going to say 2 weeks too but i think for this this time i'm going to try to do a little bit longer um, i think the 2 to 4 will give you a good gauge definitely not less than 2 but and I think it's uh, what's that called? Not 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 directly imp- uh, inversely correlated, but you know somebody like me who's really just 
barely wanting to move the needle is different than somebody who's, for example, trying to lose weight. You know, so for me, some of my levers are in the fitness realm and and on you know what I'm going to do on the fitness side. So if you still want more information, or oh wait, did I, did I miss it, miss anything? Um, so those are our kind of three action steps. Yep. Um, I think the goals probably is is a very good and be specific with them, right? Because when you when you leave things open, then you can kind of be loose and lax with them. So have very specific goals for yourself. All right. Um, Chris Irvin did an interview about macros and fine-tuning the macros on the ketogenic athlete, and I got a lot out of that, so I will stick that in the show notes. So if you were inspired um, and you weren't intimidated by our kind of, uh, you know, multiple different ways to go, uh, I thought he did a pretty good overview and went into a little bit lower level of some of those things, What you know, everything from why athletes need a different, you know, might want more or less more um, revolving around uh, macronutrients. So it was a pretty good deep dive. So I'll, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. So anything else? No, give us feedback, guys. We'd love to hear what you guys are thinking, what you want to want us to discuss, topic, ideas, anything we can improve. Again, this is for you. This is why we're doing it, to try to help other people become healthy. So give us feedback. You can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, email. We have a website. Everything is Ketonian Corner. So go out and uh, let us know what you think. All right. Sure. Thanks, Thanks guys. Everybody.